Hi, this is Val and today I would like to propose a cheap and easy solution to the problem of a speedometer that displays a speed greater than the actual speed. And I will focus here on the case of a Prius since this is the core uh, on which I am encountering the problem. But maybe this will work on other cores too. I did a lot of searches on the web and the solutions that are proposed are not satisfactory at all. For example, one of the solutions that I read consists in changing the tire size. But come on, how much are we going to spend for a new set of tires? That's ridiculous. Plus, the gear ratios are optimized for the original tire size. So if we change them, the gas mileage is going to get worse, which defies the purpose of a Prius. Another solution that is proposed on the web is to change the gears. But that's not any better. Not only would the gas mileage get worse, but also touching at the transmission is at least a $2,000 job. And maybe the most disappointing video that I found was that of a guy who explained for 15 minutes that the speedometer is purposely programmed to display a wrong speed by law. And at the end of his video, the solution that he proposes is just to give up and accept things as they are. This is totally unacceptable, so I want to propose my own solution. This solution should be relatively cheap, maybe something like $30 or so, I don't know yet, and easy. At least it will be easy for you, since I'm gonna do the hard part of the job. So the idea is for me to create a small electronic circuit that will bypass the signal that is sent to the speedometer in order to make it believe that we are going slower than we really are. Then the speedometer, by exaggerating the speed, will actually display the correct speed. If the circuit works, I can produce several units and sell them, like I said, for something like 30 bucks or so. The installation of the circuit in your car will be easy, as we shall see. All right, since I'm a physics professor, I cannot go without explaining what I'm doing. So let us start with the theory. Unless you are driving on a perfectly straight line, in general, your car follows a circular arc. The four wheels are located at different distances from the center of this arc. In other words, the four wheels follow circular arcs with different radii as shown on the picture, R1, R2, R3, and R4. Now, you should know from high school that the arc length is proportional to the radius. This means that, in a given amount of time, the four wheels cover different lengths, and therefore they all have different speeds. Now, each wheel has a speed sensor that sends electrical pulses to the ABS module. The frequency of these pulses is proportional to the wheel speed. One of the tasks of the ABS module is to analyze the four wheel speeds and determine if they are slipping or not, and take appropriate action when the driver accelerates or hits the brake pedal. Another task that is of interest for us is that it combines the information of the four wheel sensors into a single signal that has a frequency proportional to the car speed. So the role of the speedometer is only to convert this frequency into a speed. The speedometer simply calculates the speed with the equation V equals C times F, where V is the speed C is a suitable constant and F is the frequency. The point is that the registered value of C is purposely made too large so that the calculated V is greater than what it should be. 
if we had the information on the microchips in the speedometer, we would only have to reprogram them with the correct value of C. But this is a secret that is well kept. So the alternative is to correct the calculated V by intercepting the value of F that is sent to the speedometer, reducing it, and then forwarding it to the speedometer. Now we need to determine by how much the frequency needs to be reduced. And for this, we need to know how wrong the speedometer is. One way to do this is to measure how many extra miles per hour it gives at a given speed. And here I chose to do this measurement at 64 MPH and I will explain in the following why I made that particular choice. So we only need to drive the car at the true speed of 64 MPH as indicated by a GPS and note the speed displayed by the speedometer. Then the number n of extra mph is just the difference between the speedometer speed and 64. And once this value is known, the correction to any frequency is simply obtained by multiplying it by the factor 64 over 64 plus n. So why did I choose this particular speed of 64 mph? The first thing to know is that the electronic circuit needs to know the period, which is just the inverse of the frequency. And since it must reduce the frequency, that means that it must increase the period. So the period needs to be corrected by multiplying it by the inverse factor 64 plus n divided by 64. Now we want the circuit to be as simple as possible so we want to work exclusively with integral numbers. This is the case for 64 and n. The period t could be any number, so in principle it is a real number. But if we express it in units of milliseconds, then we can to a good approximation take it to be an integral number too. Now, in order to determine the correction to the period, the electronics needs to perform three operations, an addition, a multiplication, and a division. The addition is pretty easy from the electronic point of view. However, the multiplication is much more involved and the division even more. And the point is that we want these operations to be as fast as possible because the circuit has to perform them many times per second. The trick is that we can save the time on the division and make it as fast and easy as an addition if the divisor is a power of 2. To understand why, you probably know that it is very easy for us to divide by 10, 100, 1000, or in other words, any power of 10. We simply shift the decimal point to the left. This is because we use a base of 10. Electronic circuits use a base of 2, binary, so they can as well divide by any power of 2 simply by shifting the decimal point to the left. Since 64 is the 6th power of 2, dividing by 64 in base 2 simply means shifting the decimal point to the left by 6 places, and that's something that the electronics can do in a fraction of a second. But now you may argue that 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, or 256 are also powers of 2. So why did I choose 64? If I had chosen to measure the number n at a speed of 4 miles per hour, as indicated by a GPS, the speedometer at such a low speed would probably indicate 4 or 5 mph regardless of how wrong it is at high speeds. This means that our correction factor would have a very poor precision. Choosing a higher speed increases the precision. So the choice of 64 mph is motivated by three conditions. It is a power of two, so operations are much faster. It is legally attainable in the USA, and it is the highest speed hence with greatest precision 
that satisfies the previous conditions. That's all for the theory. So I designed a prototype for the circuit, converted the theoretical circuit into a PCB design, transferred it to a copper-plated epoxy, and assembled the circuit. So here is at the bottom right what it looks like. And now it's time for us to test it. All right, so here is the circuit. I connected it to my um, generator. I'm going to inject a frequency of 250 Hertz. And I'm going to look at the output with the oscilloscope. So here, uh, let me turn on the A trace. It shows the signal that corresponds to the 250 Hz frequency that I'm injecting into the circuit. But now the circuit is not powered up yet. So let me turn it on and you will see that the LED will blink for two seconds. That's what confirms that the circuit is turned on. All right. So right now, the, the, the microchip uh, is reset. So that means that it doesn't perform any correction of the speed. So now if I turn on the output, the trace that corresponds to the output of the circuit, it shows the same frequency as the input frequency. It doesn't make any correction. All right. So you see that both traces have a period of, if we start from here, we have one, two, three, four, four squares for a period. Okay. And um, one square corresponds to one millisecond. So the period is four milliseconds. The inverse of it gives you a frequency of 250 Hertz. Okay. Same input, same output. Now, let's say that I want to make a correction. Let's say that uh, maybe the speed that is displayed by uh, the speedometer at 64 miles per hour, maybe my, sp my speedometer displays 74 miles per hour. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to program it so that it makes the correction. So for this, I am going to put the, the switch here. We can't really see it on the video. I'm going to put the switch in uh, programming mode. And I'm going to press the push button until and keep it hold. Um, I'm going to, to press and hold the button until the LED blinks 10 times. So that, mean, that means a correction of 10 miles per hour. So let me do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. Now I turn off the programming mode and in order to check that it has been correctly programmed, I press it once and the LED will blink. It should blink 10 times. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Now let us look at the output. So here, you see that now the, the oscilloscope, it is programmed to trigger on the channel one. Can we see here? Or it's hard to see. This indicates channel one. So that's why we see the first trace uh, being steady. But of course now, since the circuit is making a correction, it sends a frequency that is smaller. It sends the actual speed. Okay, the speedometer displays 77 miles per hour, sorry, 74 miles per hour, but the actual speed is 64. So that means that the frequency is lower, all right? And that's why this trace is moving. So what I can do is uh, to um, ask the oscilloscope to trigger on the second trace so that now the second trace is steady. And you can see, let me maybe shift it um, in time, like this. You can see that now 
the period is longer than four squares. It's one, uh, one, two, three, four, almost five squares. Okay, so that's normal. The, there's a correction, so the frequency is smaller. The period is longer. So the circuit makes. Uh, I mean, the the circuit seems to to work. It corrects the frequency as expected. Okay, and of course, uh, let me switch the trigger back to um, channel one. Okay, I can vary the frequency if I increase it. Then the period on both traces is going to get smaller. But the second trace is always. Let me uh, trigger to it. The second trace is still longer, I mean, has a longer period than the first trace, okay? So that means that the circuit is making the correction at every frequency that is injected. That means also at every speed that uh, is recorded, all right? So hopefully this will work. And well, uh, all that is left is that I only need to include this circuit into my core. And we will see in a future video if this works as expected. So now I need to mount the circuit into my core and see if it works for real. This will be the subject of the next video. If you are interested in the results, register to my channel so that you will get notified when the video is ready. And I would also appreciate if you can share this video on your social network. I hope to see you soon. Bye.